Yo, Atlas speaking, and welcome to part 3 of What If I Was Reborn Into the Bleach Universe and Became a Hollow with a System. Let the tale begin. Chapter 41 Meanwhile Meanwhile back on Earth Masaki was nervous and a little scared as she was walking up to her family home that she hadn't seen in years. Would they be able to forgive me? She wondered. She sighed and finally rang the doorbell. Yuzu opens the door and doesn't react right away. Her and Karen were only five when they lost their mom so she is quite confused feeling she is familiar. She can't quite place her right away though. Masaki falls to her knees and breaks into sobs as she hugs her daughter who becomes completely stunned. Yuzu, she manages to get out between sobs. Seeing her had made all her emotions hit at once. Yuzu broke out of her stupor and hesitantly questioned him, Mom? Why yes. I'm back. She answers and Yuzu starts hugging her back tightly and sobbing too. Yuzu? What's taking so long? They hear as Karen comes to look for Yuzu who went to answer the door. It didn't take her long to realize what was going on though and to run up and join them in their emotional hug though. Just like Karen not much later Ishin also showed up to see what was going on, but he just fell to his knees sobbing unable to believe what his eyes were seeing as he watched his daughters and the wife he believed to be deceased. I I am possible. He stammered. He was confused, because everything indicated she had died including the fact that his powers had slowly returned over the four years following the events that Masaki and Ichigo went through. The only slight discrepancy was the lack of a body, but with the heavy storms making the river go wildly out of its bounds this wasn't that surprising even if she hadn't been consumed by a hollow. They had searched for a long time, but once it became noticed Luya's powers were returning Kasuk had told him this was likely the result of her passing on releasing the seal on his powers and then returning to him. After a little while of them hugging and Ishin just been complete stunned and in tears Masaki noticed him getting up hand in hand with her girls and going up to Ishin the three of them hugging him too. Hi. Honey, she says shyly. He is still kind of stunned and touches her cheeks as if to make sure she is really there before he hugs her back tightly afraid to let go again. Um, where is Ichigo? She manages to ask eventually. Ishin looks at their two daughters a little unsure what to say. Um, he is on a trip with some friends. We should talk about it later, he eventually decided to say avoiding the topic in front of the two young and innocent girls. The family spent their time catching up though Masaki concealed most information regarding what happened and where she had been from her daughters since she didn't want to reveal anything supernatural to them yet. Eventually it was time for the girls to go to bed and Ishin had called Yurura Kasuk to come talk. He showed up not too much later though. Oh hey! Welcome back. Where have you been? Kasuk asked in a frivolous tone when he first saw Masaki. Ishin shook his head but was also interested in a more in-depth explanation now that their daughters were in bed. So how are you alive? Kasuk asks her. It's a long story. She said with a sigh. Ishin put his hand on her back running it gently while nodding encouragingly at her. So that night Ichigo and me were attacked. I tried to protect him, but that lead to me being attacked instead. However after he ran it turned out he didn't kill me and instead spit me out. She said. Kasuk's eyebrow raised in curiosity though he still managed to maintain his frivolous demeanor. Ishin still seemed concerned. Remember that boy that died twenty years ago when we fought that hollow? She asked. Ishin nods. Kasuk just stared at them curiously. He wasn't there after all only having heard about the events afterwards and dealing with Masaki's problems due to it. The hollow that took me was sentient unlike the others and told me he was that boy. He had turned into a hollow, but was captured by Captain Sosuke Aizen for experiments, she said. Now she really had Kasuk's full attention since he was very interested in what Aizen had been up to during his exile. Ishin looked a little sad thinking about that night. Too much had gone wrong. So what happened? Kasuk asked, unable to conceal his excitement. Well, he managed to escape due to an illusion skill he has that they weren't aware of though that took ten years. He had overheard some of their plans including the attack on me and interfered. He couldn't risk them knowing the attack failed though which is why I couldn't come back until now, 
she said. Now? Why now? Kisuk asked curiously. Well Aizen's plans are starting now. He should have faked his death already and be getting ready to betray Soul Society for good any moment now once he gets his hands on the Hogyoku, she said. Wait how do you know about the Hogyoku? Kisuk asked in surprise. He overheard it during the experiments. Apparently Aizen is working with a few others in Soul Society. Ikimaru Jin and Kanin Tozen. He is already effectively the king of Hueco Mundo and is planning to use the Hogyoku to complete his experiments on merging Shinigami power into Hollow to form hybrids and build an army, she explains the plans. Kisuk slaps his fist on his palm while saying that explains a lot with the strange things happening lately. Strange things? Masaki asks. Yeah, like Ichigo becoming a substitute Shinigami, his friends getting powers and his little friend that had my Hogyoku being taken to Soul Society, he says calmly. What? Shinigami? Where is he now? She asks adamantly. Ishin was sweating heavily. Chapter 42, Ongoing Ishin looked at Kasuk trying to find some way to explain this. Kasuk just acted oblivious to his stares. Erm, well the girls were attacked by a hollow. While trying to save them Ichigo got a Shinigami injured and she gave him her powers to save them, he started to explain what lead up to the current situation. Masaki looked nervous since she still hadn't seen Ichigo unlike everyone else. Then two Shinigami came to take the female Shinigami away and attacked Ichigo and his friend while destroying the source of Ichigo's Shinigami powers, he continued before glancing at Kasuk again. Then Kasuk helped him regain his powers and created a portal for Ichigo, his friends, and Yorichi to travel to Soul Society so they can save her and bring her back, he finished. Are you too crazy? she asked them. Well I hid the Hogyoku in the Jigai that the Shinigami Kachiki Rukia used fusing it with her soul. Kisuk explained. So that is how Aizen is trying to get his hand on it? She asks him. Well, Yuruchi is there to help them, he tries to justify. Masaki glare at her husband. And how is just she supposed to keep them safe? She asks. They're stronger than you think and I had to be here to take care of our daughters and he didn't know about our background, he said nervously. There is nothing I can do now, but if they don't come back safely... So help me, she says threatening most of all to Ishin. Ishin tries to apologize and looks as pathetic as possible unable to make any good excuses to calm down his wife who is ready to rip off his head and given the spiritual pressure she is giving off she just might be able to do it. Meanwhile you're sleeping on the couch until they do get back, she completed his sentence. Kasuk raised his eyebrows as he noticed Masaki's spiritual pressure. Didn't you lose your powers? he asked both in curiosity and hoping to change the subject. I did lose them, but over the years spent near that hollow they reawakened. Well that isn't all. Can you set up a barrier isolating this room from the outside? she asks Kasuk. Kasuk nods and sets up a barrier surrounding the room there and isolating it from the outside by all senses. Okay, we're clear, he says. She nods and starts to unleash her nictic form causing the hollified armor to spread all over her and her eyes to turn black with an orange iris while her incisors elongated. Finally she also shows off her unhalic bogan that her hylic bogan transforms into during the transformation. Kasuk walks closer to her inspecting her eyes and touching the armor with intrigue. How interesting! The armor is kind of like the material of the hollow mask and the transformation is kind of like the visored, but there is no Shinigami power involved, he ponders to himself. Also this explains why your powers returned, he says to Ishin who has been trying to not be noticed as much as possible right now. Eh, he blurts out. It seems the hollow part of her power displaced the Shinigami part of yours that was sealed inside her slowly over the years driving it out and returning it to you. Also somehow in this process it managed to remain in equilibrium with her Quincy powers that had gone dormant somehow, he hypothesized. It wasn't quite at equilibrium right away. I almost died when the hollow side burst out and almost went on a rampage if I hadn't been stopped, she clarified. Although it's a lot like the visor this shouldn't be possible because unlike Shinigami where it is hard, but possible, her Quincy spirit power should clash with the hollow part until she died. However, 
somehow with your Shinigami power having suppressed it and slowly allowing it to integrate over time instead of at once it succeeded. She is probably the first person to succeed instead of die, probably the last two, he says. Both Masaki and Ishin don't look like they follow a lot of it and just kind of nod along with what he is saying as he speaks his mind mostly for his own benefit. Meanwhile Masaki releases the transformation turning her back to normal again. I'd love to get some measurements to see just how the two are blending while you maintain your transformed state. Kasuk says. Masaki frowns as that is just about the least of her priorities right now. Maybe we can do that some other time, she said reluctantly, more concerned about her son than satisfying Kasuk's curiosity for now. Although she eventually would want more information about what she had become she couldn't focus on that right now. Kasuk ended up leaving not much later leaving the two alone where Masaki just shot Ishin one last glare as she headed to the bedroom while he knew he didn't have much of a choice beyond trying to coax her over the next few days and hopefully make some progress at calming her down. Back in Hueco Mundo, Hisashi had just finished fighting another small group of Jillian. He kept avoiding large groups. Because although he was far more powerful than a regular Jillian and was able to trick most of them quite easily if he were to be surrounded by dozens of them all firing their zero at him at once it was still very likely he could end up dead. Also with those three Ajuchas chasing him down even if it didn't leave him dead it very well could leave him injured and recovering while they find him. So instead he looked for small groups of stragglers on their own that he could pick off instead. Although this was much slower it was so much safer and though in a rush he wasn't in a rush to die. Evolution requirements met. Evolution commencing. Oh shit! Hisashi thought as he suddenly got the warning at the last moment. Chapter 43, New Form He didn't even have time to use, Hachijio Sogai, to conceal himself before his spirit power started running rampant through every part of his body to facilitate his evolution to Ajuchas. Hisashi felt his form compressing and refining, thankfully compared to expanding like he had before this wasn't near as excruciating as that had been allowing him to keep some of his consciousness instead of completely blacking out which allowed him to notice his line of sight lower drastically. Evolution completed. Rank, Jillian to Ajuchas. Strength, 84 to 126. Dexterity, 71 to 213. Constitution, 40 to 60. Intelligence, 30 to 60. Spirit power, 268,841 to 537,682. Mission completed. Passive skill, Silencioso gained. Silencioso. A passive ability that dampens all non-vocal sounds generated by the user by 95% at all times. Phew, at least I don't seem to be insanely big, he thought happily. A step towards a more human-like form no matter how small the step was will always be welcome to him. He wasn't sure exactly how tall he was compared to his base hollow form since he had never been in that form in the forest of Minos so he couldn't quite compare his current self with the current reference points. He roughly estimated he was about the same size, maybe a little shorter than he was in his base hollow form which was around 10 feet tall. He lifted his arms and saw they were back to human-like arms transforming into iridescent blades at the forearm. He had kind of missed them when fighting as a Jillian since although he didn't like having hands outside of combat, combat was all he had been doing since his evolution to Jillian and swords were what he was most comfortable with. Although tearing Jillian apart with his hands had been fresh, he was looking forward to further refining his swordsmanship. He looked down at his feet to see he still only had two legs unlike before he transformed into a Jillian so thankfully he remained bipedal just like he had become as a Jillian which was another more human-like feature he was happy about. This also meant he could finally put to work some of the footwork knowledge he had gleaned from spying on Bayakuya that was impossible when he was four-legged or a giant without a sword and merging it into his footwork knowledge from when he was still human. Finally he noticed something strange from the corners of his eyes. What the fuck? Do I have two extra arms? He though as he turned his head to see an extra set of arms coming from around his shoulders identical to the first set he had. It took him a little to get used to using them as he had never had four arms and even with some instinctual knowledge on how to move them it was still a completely new experience to him. Well four blade arms means being able to unleash even more slashes at the same time from more directions to confuse and damage opponents. 
so though not quite human-like it'll be helpful at least for as long as I am in Hueco Mundo, so I'll take what I can get, he thought while releasing some slashes with his new arms. He couldn't even hear the sound of them cutting through the air unsure if they were just that sharp or whether to thank his new passive skill, Silencioso, for this. He also felt like he was light as a feather compared to before. Being a Jillian felt kind of like what he imagined controlling a mecha would feel like, something he wasn't very happy with. He had some of his iridescent carapace again covering his shoulder, shins and back where he finally regained his wings. The color was the same as before, but the form was much slimmer and form-fitting. At least he was mostly humanoid now outside of having four arms and wings. The carapace could just be excused as looking like he was wearing armor even if it was actually part of his body. The carapace covering his wings shifted letting out his wings which he fluttered for a moment. Along with the arm blades this was probably the thing he was happiest about. Though it was possible to stand on the sky which was making to flying it just wasn't the same. Flying with wings cost him in stamina rather than spirit power which was a much less detrimental cost to him. It was also faster, more controlled and filled him with a sense of freedom that nothing else could provide. The closest was swimming, but there wasn't the resistance that water provided. System, please show me my status panel, he told the system already quite happy about the direction his form had moved towards during the evolution. Unlike before he no longer had to deal with a massive abdomen and extra set of legs reducing the space he took by quite a lot. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 58. Race, hollow. Rank, Ajuchas. Level, 128. XP, 13,810 out of 91,710. Stats. Strength, 126. Dexterity, 213. Constitution, 60. Intelligence, 60. Spirit Power, 537,682. Available stat points, 0. Passive Skills Spiritual Energy Absorption Super Speed Regeneration Acidic Touch Silencioso Active Skills Soul Body Separation Spirit Power Concealment Illusory Aura Blood Energy Blade Transcribe Hachijio Sogai Ciro Cumin Negation I'll have to test out my new dexterity. It might take some getting used to that large of a jump at once, he thought to himself. He was very happy to be back to his dexterity-focused build though since that was what he had been striving for all along and the Jillian form had taken that away from him. It was a necessary evil for the sake of progress though. Without him even realizing it between losing control and focus with the evolution and its results he had been surrounded. Three figures revealed themselves from behind trees in three different directions not giving him the choice of retreat. The loss of control during the evolution process had meant not only his spirit power concealment had been unable to cover the pressure he was giving off during the transformation he had also lost the visual concealment illusory aura provided him. Chapter 44 Interrogation The three that surrounded him were the same three that seemed to be tracking him and had almost caught him a week ago. He could probably get away using a combination of his new and improved speed and stealth skills, but he couldn't recall what their powers were exactly while they were still ajuchas and they, right after the Nelial trio Neldon P.E., are the least aggressive hollow around so he wasn't going to take the chances to strain their relationship unless absolutely necessary. Also pissing off one of the few Vasto Lord ranked hollow in Hueco Mundo seems like a very bad idea right after becoming an ajuchas himself. Even more so one that will probably be turned into an Erencar becoming one of the most powerful Espada quite soon thanks to Aizen. The three of them closed in on him while he was considering his options. Well, well, hello there, the Ajuchas looking like a snake said arrogantly, but paying closer attention he noticed they were all quite wary unlike her words even the one speaking seemed ready to attack on a moment's notice. They had seen the remains of his previous battles and they had been convinced it was an Ajuchas just from the damage that was done in the battles and the amount of Jillian he was taking out only to find him while he was evolving into an Ajuchas. 
This meant he was already at a level that could threaten them even before he evolved and this made them very concerned for their safety now that he had actually become an Ajuchas. They were confident they could take him down with the three of them, but would all three survive if they tried? They weren't so sure about that at all. Should I put up my hands? No with blades for arms that just looks like you're preparing to strike. Lowering them would actually be less threatening, he thought with a sigh as he made sure to actually not raise his arms to show he isn't a threat and made sure to keep an eye on all three with both his eyes and spiritual senses at all times. Hey! Answer us, the unicorn deer one shouted impatiently interrupting his thoughts. The lion one remained silent throughout though just keeping her eyes glued to him. Um, hi, he answered quite unsure. All three of them seemed a little dumbfounded by the dry response. Although Ajuchas started gaining sentience, they were generally still quite aggressive even more so for newly evolved ones that hadn't adjusted to their newly gained sentience yet. Getting attacked was as likely as getting a response. Cat got your tongues? He asked smirking at the lion. The unicorn deer got quite annoyed frowning intensely and seemed like she was ready to pounce on him. The lion just growled, but managed to keep her cool for the most part. You, you, the unicorn deer managed to get out muttering indignantly. Foo foo foo, at least he knows how to talk it seems. We have some questions to ask you, the snake laughed haughtily. He made sure to behave like he had no clue about them and had never seen them before since as far as they knew they had never seen or met before and even if he had he shouldn't have been sentient at that time. Excusing Adjuchas for having above average sentience and calm is one thing. Ajillian is a whole other story and although it doesn't matter much right now, if Tyr Harabel finds out and in turn once she joins Aizen he finds out that will put a spotlight on him he wouldn't appreciate. So are we staying here waiting for others to show up? He asked them though he wasn't too concerned considering his ability to use the chaos and simply disappear. The fewer that knew about all his abilities the better though. You could practically see the tick mark on the unicorn deer's head with his nonchalant answers showing he wasn't intimidated by them or more importantly by her. You should know your place. We're Haribel Samas and disrespecting us is disrespecting her, she yells in indignation. He might have been trying to lay low, but now that he was in Ajuchas and was interacting with Cinch and Hollow and would be increasingly so going forward he needed to change his tactics a little from how he had been acting. There is only one true rule in Hueco Mundo and that is the strong make the rules and are respected. Now that he had some modicum of power to speak of hiding all of it would do him more harm than good. The same went for seeming completely harmless. He stopped hiding his spirit pressure with spirit power concealment and released it fully revealing his beyond Ajucha's rank spirit pressure laced with vicious killing intent as he turns to look at the snake that though haughty had been the reasonable one out of the three and looked at her unamused. Does she speak for the three of you? He asked her with an unnerving calm despite the killing intent oozing from him. The three of them could feel the pressure on them almost causing them to buckle their knees and the closest they had come to this feeling was how they felt when they were confronted by Barrick and Lizenbarn, the uncrowned king of Hueco Mundo together with Tyr Haribel. It wasn't quite that bad, but nothing like they experienced when fighting other Ajuchas. If they could sweat their backs would have been soaked already. No. No, don't listen to her. She just likes to joke. The stupid horse. Just ignore her. The snake tried to calm things down as she was losing confidence even in taking him down with some sacrifices if the three of them fought him. You could never say for sure just from the spirit pressure alone, but there was enough to make it a serious concern for her. The lion was crouched and poised to pounce on him the moment things took a turn for the worse, but the pride in her eyes had taken a noticeable dent as she looked much more wary now than even before. H. How about we go to our place and just have a seacom chat about this? We're all equals after all and our leader would be happy to meet another sensible hollow. No need to do anything anyone would regret, the snake started babbling a bit out of nervousness, but slowly calming a bit as she continued to speak and noticed he hadn't actually attacked them yet. This type of behavior was quite common among top of Hueco Mundo and just putting pressure on them by comparison to most could almost be considered kind. Chapter 45 Acquaintances the three of them escorted him out of the forest of Minos to a cave on the surface. He was lead down a stairway into a room with a stone table in the middle. It was quite sparse and minimalist, but what were you going to expect from Hollow? 
at least until they are turned into Erenkar, even the Ajuchas and Vasto Lord are just a little above sentient beasts. Interior design isn't really meant for them. Neither is comfort it would seem from the lack of anything to sit or sleep on. Tyr Haribel was nowhere to be seen and the other three were still too nervous to restart the conversation after it broke down in the forest. After a long awkward silence Hisashi decided to try breaking the awkward atmosphere. So, I don't think you ladies ever introduced yourselves, he volunteered. They looked at each other, though he had made them nervous in the forest the walk back without unleashing his spirit pressure and killing intent had managed to calm them down quite a bit. I go by Cyan Sung Sun, the Snake Hollow eventually said first out of the three. Emmy Lu Apache, the Unicorn Deer Hollow rushed to say after Sung Sun broke the ice. And on Francesca Mila Rose, the Lion Hollow ended up saying last. And together we are, the Trace Bestia's Jazz hands JK JK. Ah, nice names, he says not sure how to keep the conversation going. Of course. Have you taken a name yet? Sung Sun ends up asking hoping to get some information at least before Tyr Haribel shows up. That way she can at least make it seems like she isn't completely useless as a subordinate. Should I tell them my actual name? It's not like it means anything to any hollow or even in soul society. At this point only a two humans know my name. Although I can't be completely honest about my origins nor skills a little bit would be good to start on the best foot with them. Hisashi mauls over in his mind. Saito Hisashi, you can just call me Hisashi though, he ended up saying trying to lighten the mood some more. Oh and it's nice to meet you three, he added. The three of them stared at each other awkwardly. Um, yes yes nice to meet you too. Sung Sun ended up answering while the other two hesitantly nodded in agreement. Not much later a tan green eyed beauty with wild blonde hair and skin tight bone armor and what looked like a shark tooth styled blade for a right arm came walking down the stairs with her long bone white shark tail swinging behind her. Most of her face was covered by her hollow mask except the area around her sultry eyes. Did she intentionally show up late and make me wait using social dynamics to exert pressure as the superior in this relationship from the start or was this just a coincidence, he wondered. The trio all lower their heads towards her out of respect as she enters the chamber. It was a little awkward for Hollow to be showing their respect in such a way. Though Hollow would generally respect and listen to those more powerful than them, at least out of self-preservation if anything. It was quite rare for them to bow down even to those stronger than them though. Welcome back Haribel Sama, they say practically in unison. Thank you, she responded before looking at the stranger in their cave. Ah. This is the one we were tracking. We found him during his evolution to Ajuchas in the forest of Minos. Sung Sun says to clarify. Saito Hisashi, a pleasure to make your acquaintance, he says frivolously. Haribel raises her eyebrow. For a brand new Ajuchas to be so well spoken and not only that, but she couldn't sense any killing intent which was near ubiquitous with all hollow was rather unusual. You're a rather strange hollow. Haribel said frankly. Ha! Huh. I get that a lot, just ask Miss Kirby over there. Hisashi joked and nodded towards Sun Sun playfully. She just grew more confused as she herself was just about the calmest hollow she knew, calm wasn't the right word though. Casual was more accurate. Something that was even less common than calm among the hollow as they were still heavily influenced by their most base desires and used to dealing with other hollow most if not all of which wanted to eat them. How very human, she said curiously. Hisashi shrugged nonchalantly. So the three of them told they wanted to talk, he said to get back on topic. Haribel looked at him curiously. No, I think I already have my answers. We thought there was an Ajuchas rampaging in the forest of Minos and you weren't an Ajuchas and you definitely don't seem to be rampaging. At least not anymore if you were before, she says having made up her mind. No problem who would mind being invited to spend time with some charming ladies, he smiles. They are all quite confused, the trio most of all. The two muscle heads had no idea how to be part of this kind of conversation, meanwhile Sung Sun seemed surprisingly a bit embarrassed despite her usual haughty act. Haribel was slightly more comfortable with it as Vasto Lord began to at least exhibit a more human-like emotional spectrum than a Juches. 
However, even she is thrown off a bit by the casual banter that they haven't really run into when dealing with other Hollow, and it is throwing her off her usual cadence. Oh, and I noticed a big hammerhead shark looking die searching for you. He seemed to be out for blood, and based on my senses he was more powerful than you are. I would prepare for the worst, maybe even move in case someone has tipped him off to your hideout, he warns them. She was quite cautious, but mostly dubious when he mentioned they seemed stronger. She was only familiar with one hollow on her level. Hmm, that sounds a bit familiar. Tyr said, looking up trying to recall what it reminds her of. She looks at the other three. Didn't I cut a shark like a juches when we confronted Berrigan back then? She asked them. Apache tilted her head and thought. Sun Sun nodded immediately though. You did Harabel Sama, she answered her diligently. He was weak though, she said quite sure of herself. Just giving you a little warning. I don't think you can defeat him as you four are right now. Maybe if you team up perfectly, but even then I doubt it. He looked strange. He was missing his mask, if that means anything, he tried dropping some information for their benefit and to inspire trust in himself for future dealings with them. I think we learned what we needed to. You seem to be in control of yourself, how about you join our group? We can help keep each other safe, increasing your chances of survival, and we have hundreds of years of experience we could share. Haribel said, she had formed the group for female hollow to protect themselves from the male ones, but he seemed quite unusual and she was interested in learning more. Chapter 46 See You As much as I would love to spend more time with you four and look forward to doing so in the future. I do have my own goals to pursue, so I'm forced to decline, he says with slight disappointment. As great as protection is, they're practically pacifist in that they don't devour hollow to grow their strength, which is completely opposite to my path to power which I just can't afford. I would be shooting myself in the foot if I spent a lot of time with them. Not to mention that Aizen could show up to recruit them any time now and I don't want to meet him yet, he thought sighing inwardly. He would need to continue devouring Hollow to maintain his insane growth speed or he would just slow down in growth to at or who knows maybe even below regular Hollow. This might be acceptable to a Juches or Vasto Lord who felt like they had reached their limits after centuries of growth. They were eventually forced to go along with Aizen due to him and the Hogyoku being their only possibility for further growth, but he wasn't even close to that. His power was still increasing at an insane pace managing to go from a basic hollow to a Juches with 10 years of effort and due to the system this growth without barriers should continue for the foreseeable future. He might have to think about future progress by the time he became an Erenkar since he had no clue what came after if anything since it wasn't in canon. However this was still two whole evolutions away. He could just think about that once he got there. This doesn't mean I wouldn't be up for meeting in the future and working together if our goals align, he said thoughtfully. Haribel nodded and seemed to be happy or at least satisfied with this for the most part. It was really hard to tell when the only thing you can see is the person's eyes and they are a pretty cold and unemotional person to start with. Or I could come over for tea and gossip. Though you really should work on your interior design first, he joked exaggeratedly looking around the sparse chamber for added effect. The four seemed to be growing numb to his off-kilter conversation style as even the two hotheads seemed to no longer be getting annoyed at his attitude towards them, probably just assuming this was just some weird quirk in this hollow's personality. It wouldn't be the first time this happened as Haribel herself and her three subordinates to a lesser degree had a very unhollow like personality. Well see you later ladies. Oh and Haribel, one last piece of advice on me. Don't trust or put your faith in anyone except these three here even if they seem to be granting your dreams. Not even me, he starts off dead serious, but ends up teasing with a wink as he leaves the underground chamber and looks back at her. If he could give her a direct warning of Aizen at this time he would, but they just didn't know each other well enough to where she could just take his word for it so a vague warning was the best he could do for now. He could see about getting closer after she became an espada and opening her eyes after she opened her heart to him like she had the other three of her future fraction. The moment he was about to exit the stairwell though he disappeared along with any trace of his spirit power just in case anyone was keeping an eye on him as if he had never been there in the first place. Now his steps aren't even audible anymore. He finally got a chance to test out his new and improved dexterity with no one looking on his way back to the forest of Minos. 
No one could even see or hear him and he was moving at what he felt was Shuimpa slash Sonido like speeds even without the skills. He wasn't sure exactly how fast people using those skills were, it sure seemed like it differed from person to person so probably relied on how skilled they were at executing the particular movement skill. However he felt like he was flying on the ground with his current speed. At least he knew that he was easily breaking the sound barrier unlike before his last evolution which was exhilarating. He got back to the forest of Minos in only a fraction of time that it cost the four of them to travel to the cave before and he was sure even if somehow a hollow could see slash sense through his camouflage somehow it would be hard for anything below a vasto lord to keep up with him speedwise. As for the vasto lord there were literally only three, known hollow at that level currently at least until Aizen started creating Arankar using the Hogyoku which he knew should start happening very soon. System, please tell me how long has it been since I came to Hueco Mundo? he asked. Answer, 17 days, 17 hours, 42 minutes, 35 seconds. Okay, based on what I can remember, Aizen should either currently be or just about to betray Soul Society. Then there is about a month where he is building his strength and experimenting with creating the Arankar before they attack Karakura Town and around three months before Oraheim gets kidnapped and the rest of Ichigo's gang go after her, he went over the timeline as far as he remembered. It was probably going to become increasingly less accurate now that Masaki should have met back up with her family and he had interacted with Haribel and her future fraction, but it was better than nothing and the larger differences only just happened meaning the ripples shouldn't have traveled too far just yet. I went from Jillian to Ajuchas in less than three weeks and could have even made it in under two if I didn't delay it to level some more and max the stat multiplication of evolving. Hopefully, I can manage a similar feat in transforming to a vast lord before shit starts to go down, he thought. If I could build some alliances in that time it would be even better, but the only possible ones I can think of are the Haribel's group, the Nelial group and maybe Coyote Stark. The last option I could probably cross off, he is easy going for a hollow. However, despite his loneliness he seems a hard person to build a relationship with if he is as shown. I should try to continue building rapport with Haribel's group and see if I can meet Neliel's group though I haven't a clue where and when to meet her at least before she meets Ichigo, he considered his options. Chapter 47, Massacre New Mission, Become Vasto Lord Reward, Upgrade Skill, Super Speed Regeneration Oh sweet, I already heal incredibly fast from the majority of wounds. I wonder how an upgrade would change it, he thought looking at the new reward he was promised. Hisashi was traveling through the forest of Minos when he sensed a large group of Jillian. It took some tracking, but eventually he found a large grouping of around 60 Jillian. Before his evolution to Ajuchas he would definitely have avoided such a large group of Jillian due to the risks involved. However the combination of his new speed and other abilities should make him near invincible to these weak and dumb Jillian. Excited to try out his new power he circled the pack while focused on his spiritual senses and went over the whole range multiple times to make sure there were no higher ranked hollow around that could interfere with him. Finally he stopped scanning the area and pumped a ridiculous amount of spirit power into Hachijio Sogai to create a massive concealment barrier surrounding the entire area containing the pack of Jillian. He wanted to make sure the power released by the Jillian and destruction during the fight wouldn't be noticed before he got a chance to finish it and devour everything. Though it put a significant dent in his spirit power just his physical abilities should be more than enough to deal with them now. Once he entered the barrier he stopped using illusory aura and spirit power concealment to free up some of the constant drains on spirit power and instead pump the extra available amount into blood and energy blade to further boost his base stats and coat all four of his blade arms in energy to increase their cutting capacity. All right, time to put it all to the test, he thought to himself. He was feeling rather fired up to see the results of his hard work. Some of the closer Jillian started noticing him after he stopped concealing his visibility and they could feel the massive amounts of spirit pressure that was no longer being concealed and instead was reducing their abilities further through sheer pressure. Hisashi kicked off from the ground with a blast disappearing from the spot as he flew towards one of the Jillian at supersonic speed. On his way he passed a Jillian that he bisected horizontally with a spinning slash while continuing on to his target Jillian that received a stab right through its mask with another blade. 
He kicked it from that Jillian's head with enough force to completely obliterate the already damaged mask and sending him backwards through the air towards the next target having already killed two before any of them even had a chance to register what happened. In this way he had already bounced around between over eight Jillian like some kind of pinball before they even reacted. He was about to hit the ninth one when some finally managed to react to him and seven zero were fired on track to hit him in midair. He immediately switched his blood artery to blood vene, redirecting the spirit power he was spending on increasing his offense to defense instead tanking the zero that were about to hit him. Despite blood vene protecting him the zero still managed to take off a few layers of skin but they grew back almost instantly with his improved super speed regeneration, returning him to his optimal state. Just before he got to the ninth through the reign of Ciro he switched back to Blood Artery and slashed through it before kicking off and flipping onto the one next to it for another quick strike with two of his blades slashing it. Another group of Ciro were fired his way and he sent the remaining energy blade energy on his blades and a cross slash to counter them before recoding his blades with new energy. He launched himself at another two Jillian managing to behead them as he passed by and landed on one of the tree trunks turning around and jumping towards the next Jillian. A second after he launched himself from the tree trunk multiple Ciro landed where he had been moments ago absolutely obliterating it. They were simply unable to keep up with his speed. He had already landed on another Jillian the force of his landing destroying its mask and sending it hurtling into another with him still on top of it. He ran up the Jillian towards the new one using two of his arms to bisect it and launching himself towards another target before it even landed from its fall. He landed on the ground with four Jillian surrounding him charging their Ciro to ambush him. However he suddenly spun generating a small storm of blade energy sending energy blades from each of his arms slashing all four of them at the same time before they had a chance to unleash their attacks on him. It couldn't even be called a battle anymore as he tore through the pack of Jillian almost effortlessly as he dodged and blocked their attacks while dispatching them one after the other as if slaughtering livestock. He slowly whittled them down until there was only him left standing on top of a mountain of Jillian corpses. This is going to be a chore, he thought to himself as he started devouring the mountain of Jillian he had killed. It took a while to consume them all. Thankfully the barrier he put up at the start managed to conceal everything so he didn't need to run and could take his time devouring them all without wasting any of it. System, please condense the records from the last battle for me to review, he asked the system not wanting to go through each individual notification he received in the heat of combat. Plus 2, 716, 570 XP from Hollow. Plus 63, 800 spirit power from Hollow. Plus 25 levels plus 25 stat points. Damn, okay. Show me my status panel, he told the system surprised by just how much he got from massacring so many Jillian at once. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 58. Race, hollow. Rank, Ajuchas. Level, 128 to 153. XP, 48,230 out of 128,470. Stats. Strength, 126. Dexterity, 213. Constitution, 60. Intelligence, 60. Spirit power, 537,682 to 601,482. Available stat points, 0 to 25. Passive Skills Spiritual Energy Absorption Super Speed Regeneration Acidic Touch Silencioso Active Skills Soul Body Separation Spirit Power Concealment Illusory Aura Blood Energy Blade Transcribe Hachijioso Gai Ciro Cumin Negation Okay. System, put 4 status points in strength, 7 in dexterity and dump the rest into intelligence, he thought. Answer, affirmative. Strength, 126 to 130. Dexterity, 213 to 220. Intelligence, 60 to 74. Available stat points, 25 to 0. 
The changes in his strength and dexterity weren't as noticeable, however with the jump in intelligence he immediately noticed just how much clearer he was able to sense the surroundings with his spiritual senses. Not only was he able to sense further, but he was also able to process the information received with greater detail than before. Chapter 48 Pride Meanwhile back with Haribel and her subordinates. Haribel looked at her three subordinates. So what happened before I got here? She asked them. Well, we were tracking him for the past few weeks, but we were completely unable to catch sight of him only finding the remains of his battles after he was already gone every time. Sun Sun told her. Apache and Mila Rose nodded in agreement. Then we finally caught a lucky break as we felt a large and chaotic fluctuation of spirit pressure in the area we were tracking him in. We rushed there only to find he was actually in the middle of evolving from Jillian to a Juches rather than already being in a Juches. Sun Sun continued. Haribel looked curious after she mentioned they couldn't sense him until he was evolving. How come you weren't able to find him before? Haribel asked. I guess he has some way to conceal his spirit power and lost control of it during the evolution, because before that we weren't able to sense him and after we weren't able to either until he intentionally revealed it. Sun Sun explained. Are you certain it wasn't just subdued? Haribel asked curiously. I couldn't sense it either. Mila Rose admitted while Apache nodded in agreement. So what happened after that? Haribel wanted them to continue. Hisashi had been unusual increasing her curiosity. Well since he seemed powerful enough that we believed we were tracking in a Juches when he was only a Jillian we were extra cautious due to his evolution and surrounded him to make sure he couldn't escape. Then I tried engaging in conversation just to be sure despite him just coming out of his evolution. Sun Sun continued walking through the events. That's good. Haribel nodded, happy that her subordinates were erring on the side of maintaining a positive relationship even if that was risky in such situations. Sun Sun gave a warm smile unlike her usual sarcastic and haughty ones, happy to be praised by her idol. He seemed confused at first, but quickly reverted to, well you saw how he was. He seemed pretty open to conversation, but his demeanor irritated Apache and the idiot provoked him, she said. Apache glared at her, but didn't dare interrupt. Then how did you all end up here? Haribel asked her very confused now. Hollow were unstable enough without intentionally provoking them. It got scary for a bit. That's when he revealed his spirit pressure and killing intent threatening us indirectly. Sun Sun answered causing Haribel to raise an eyebrow. Indirectly, she asked. He was definitely unusual. Threats were nothing special among Hollow, but usually they were made overtly rather than not due to the direct and emotional nature of Hollow. Yeah, he just asked if we felt the same as Apache while pressuring us. I managed to calm things down after that and convince him to come here. Sun Sun explained. Good job. Haribel praised Sun Sun, Apache kept glaring at Sun Sun, but also looked a bit embarrassed as she didn't like looking bad in front of Haribel. So what are your thoughts on him? Haribel asked the three of them. Annoying, I want to beat him up. Apache answered without even the slightest hesitation. She had not forgiven him for what she considered his unforgivable rudeness towards them and most of all Haribel. He seemed nice enough. He was interesting at least Fufufu. Sun Sun said with a chuckle using her tail to cover her mouth. She was quite intrigued by the unusual hollow and eager to find out more. I don't know. It was fine. He was quite easygoing. Mila Rose said with probably the least emotion regarding the strange hollow. I want to find out more about him. I might have been able to if Apache wasn't such an idiot. Sun Sun said. Who are you calling an idiot? Apache said enraged and losing control. Sun Sun just rolled her eyes sarcastically before turning away to look back at Haribel. He was definitely unusual. We should keep an eye on him if we can. It might be hard though if he is indeed good at concealing himself. Haribel said thoughtfully. The three others simply nodded in agreement. He might make a good ally though. He seemed much calmer than most hollow so it might be a rare chance to find an hollow that is willing to help us. She said. 
it was hard to find allies interested in protecting others in Hueco Mundo as almost all Hollow instinctively wanted to oppress and even devour others. The only way to control those was through sheer force and even then they would look for ways to stab you in the back at the first opportunity. Apache seemed annoyed at just the notion of being allies with him, but she kept quiet as she would never argue with Haribel. What about that warning about the Shark Hollow? Asked Sung Sun with curiosity. Oomph, if it's true we now know about it and can just be prepared for it. We will do some training and keep a lookout for him so we can't be ambushed. That way we will be able to take care of it. Haribel responded. Though the warning made her a little cautious she knew she was one of the most powerful hollow in Hiko Mundo. Unless Berrigan himself showed up she really didn't need to be concerned. Of course. He won't stand a chance. Apache said in excitement ready to have someone to release some of her frustrations on. We will stop him for you. Mila Rose said with pride. Meanwhile Sun Sun looked a little uncomfortable. She wanted to have absolute faith in Haribel like the other two, unfortunately despite her usual haughtiness by nature she was far more scheming than the two muscleheads and the lack of information regarding the situation made her uncomfortable as she was unable to plan for it. She wasn't even sure if Hisashi was telling the truth or not and all the uncertainty just made it all worse for her. In the end the only thing she could do is believe in the others and hope for the best. Chapter 49 Measurements Back on Earth, August 13th. Ichigo and his friends stepped back onto Earth in Kasuk's basement. Their moods were still mixed. They had managed to save Rukia, however Aizen's betrayal was a shock to everyone. Even though none of them knew him before they all realized this wasn't good news for them. Kasuk welcomed them in his usual happy-go-lucky way before all of them left to finally get some good rest. Ichigo walked into his home. He heard some sounds from the kitchen. Yuzu must be preparing something. He thought to himself and decided he would say hi before crashing on his bed like he had originally planned. When he made it to the kitchen he saw what could only be a hallucination of his mother. He rubbed his eye trying to clear it up, but on a second look it hadn't changed. Despite deciding to always be strong for his friends and family, after losing his mom he broke down in tears. What? Masaki said, turning around surprised to see Ichigo in the doorway bawling his eyes out just like he used to. Despite him growing to be much taller than her she quickly went up to him wrapping her arms around him tightly as she rubbed the back of his head. There, there. She said trying to soothe him as best she could. Rather than calm down though his tears just kept coming and she didn't stop soothing him for as long as he needed it to the point where some of the things on the stove burnt, but she couldn't be bothered to care. It took a long time before Ichigo could even get a coherent sentence out trying to find out what was going on. She explained how they had been attacked by one hollow, but saved by another. Ichigo refused to believe it at first as he had been there that day, but it was the truth that his mom was in front of him alive and well. That was something he couldn't deny. She explained she got back a few weeks ago and when she asked where he was he got very awkward making an excuse about how he went on a road trip with his friends to visit another friend they hadn't seen in a while. Masaki sighed inwardly as she obviously knew exactly what had happened and where he had gone, but she didn't call him out on it deciding to just enjoy their reunion instead. Though she really wanted to punish him for lying too. A couple of days later. Masaki found herself in a large underground chamber that looked like some kind of rocky wasteland. Strangely enough it looked like there was sunlight despite them being deep underground and the chamber being massive. Welcome to my basement. Kisuk said with excitement. All right, I don't have all day. My kids will be back from school in a while and I still need to prepare for dinner. She says impatiently. If it wasn't for his incessant requests she wouldn't even be here in the first place. It had been a few weeks since she returned to her family and had been catching up with them. Even with the regular reports from Isashi there was still a lot that was missed out on. Ishin was no longer in the doghouse since Ichigo and his friends had returned though they all acted like they didn't know where he had been. The only one Ichigo was aware about knowing was Kasuk. Though she missed her new friends Reina and Isashi she was happy to have been able to catch up with her family and she regularly talked with Reina on the phone sharing what they had been up to. Kasuk nodded, he had configured a barrier around this door and all the employees were present in case they were needed for anything. 
Okay, what do you need? Masaki asked impatiently. Let's start by unleashing the hollow form. Kisuke said. He wasn't able to conceal the excitement in his eyes at being able to witness something that had never existed before. Masaki shifted into her nictic form the hollow armor with blood-like patterns covering her entire body, her eyes turning black with an orange iris and her incisors elongating. She remained in complete control as usual though. By now she had had a lot of practice maintaining the form and keeping full control of herself while using it. Interesting, how unusual. Kasuk was mumbling to himself as he was measuring the changes she went through during and after the transformation. He noted how during the transformation the hollow spirit power surged past the Quincy spirit power only for the Quincy power to surge to match it until they found a balance boosting her power far beyond her untransformed self. He was also no longer able to find any of Ishin's Shinigami power. It looked like all of it had indeed been forced out and returned to him already. He ended up having her use all her different abilities. Both those she had as a Quincy, but also those unlocked in her nictic form making sure to take measurements of everything that happened during them for him to go over later and improve his knowledge regarding holification. The data regarding such a virtually impossible hollow hybrid was a veritable treasure trove to a scientist like him and might lead to him being able to help others like the Visard. He was still very curious about the hollow she had met and that had affected her in such an unusual way, but he knew he had been gone for over a month now and no one knew where he was. Not even Masaki or Reina knew. During all of this Reina had been training like crazy. She knew Hisashi was worried about her and that he wasn't sharing all his worries with her which she blamed on her own weakness. She wanted to be strong enough to where he could share everything with her and she could share some of his burden for him. He had done so much for her and she felt she could never do enough to make up for it. Chapter 50 Back to Hueco Mundo System, how long have I been at this? He asked. Answer, 3 months 7 days 2 hours 54 minutes 34 seconds. Can you give me a summary of my progress during that time? He continued. Plus 4, 929, 320 XP from Hollow. Plus 191, 400 spirit power from Hollow. Plus 34 levels. Plus 34 stat points. Okay. System, show me my status, he requested. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 58. Race, Hollow. Rank, Ajuchas. Level, 153 to 187. XP, 105,992 out of 175,780. Stats. Strength, 130. Dexterity, 220. Constitution, 60. Intelligence, 74. Spirit Power, 601,482 to 792,882. Available stat points, 0 to 34. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. Super Speed Regeneration. Acidic Touch. Silencioso. Active Skills. Soul Body Separation. Spirit Power Concealment. Illusory Aura. Blood. Energy Blade. Transcribe. Hachijio Sogai. Ciro. Cumin. Negation. Round intelligence to 100, and put the rest of the stat points towards dexterity, he ordered. Dexterity, 220 to 228. Intelligence, 74 to 100. Available stat points, 34 to 0. He felt the points making changes to him, the dexterity wasn't as noticeable with how small of a change it was in percentage however his thoughts cleared up some and he could feel his control over his spirit power growing more precise as the changes to his intelligence stat were made. Hisashi had been hunting throughout the forest for the past couple of weeks picking off a lot of Jillian and even a few stray ajuchas. His new more humanoid form gave him a significant boost beyond just his stat's growth, but also because now he was able to finally integrate bipedal footwork into his swordsmanship unlike before. 
Unfortunately, though Jillian were quite common in the forest of Minos, they made up the vast majority of inhabitants while Ajuchas were just not that common and as he had been avoiding Lost Noches and Barragan's territory like the plague he had thankfully managed to avoid any vast O'Lord and Erenkar so far though as soon as Aizen made it here with the true Hogyoku the amount of Erenkar should increase quite a bit. Devouring Ajuchas vastly outclassed consuming Jillian at this point where despite him devouring hundreds of times the amount of Ajuchas he has managed to the Ajuchas still provided more progress towards his evolution than all the Jillian combined did. He wouldn't complain about any little gain though as he was on a timer. During this time he had been able to avoid any troublesome people during his hunts though he did sense the Haribel trio on the periphery of his senses a few times meaning they were probably keeping an eye on him on Haribel's orders. He didn't mind that as long as they didn't get in his way though. I wonder how everyone is doing. Hopefully my interference has been limited enough that Ichigo and the gang made it through the whole Soul Society arc alive or else Masaki is going to raise hell for us all. He thought to himself. He felt he had done his best to give them a better outcome though and the rest was ultimately up to them. While in thought and traveling through the forest in search of his next prey he noticed a commotion in the distance and decided to stealthily take a closer look at what was causing it. If it was some strong ajuchas clashing it could be a two-for-one special by ambushing them while distracted by each other and exhausted. There he found the Haribel trio the Trace Bestias in a standoff with a large white panther looking ajuchas staring down at them proudly and five more backing him up. They resembled a knight, a bruiser, a bull, one that still looked like a Jillian and a hammerhead shark. Grimjow Jager Jacks and his followers. One of the last things I wanted to run into at this time in Hueco Mundo. Not only is he annoying to deal with himself, he should also be joining Aizen any time soon now if he isn't already in contact with him. Worse unlike Haribel's little group this is never going to end peacefully with this hothead around. Hisashi thought to himself hoping to make a quick exit if he could. They must have run into his little clique while trying to follow him and once Grimjow came across them it would be hard to get him to let go of his targets. The trio was more powerful than Grimjow's teammates individually, but they were outnumbered and Grimjow is significantly stronger than the rest of his group. I would usually just ignore Grimjow and avoid him using my stealth skills, but chances are this encounter was never meant to happen it being a result only from my presence meaning the trio could very well die or be forced to submit changing things significantly. Then again so could interfering with their fight and revealing myself to Grimjow shortly before he joins Aizen, he pondered unsure as to what to do with this situation. Finally he sighed to himself, in the end I'm kind of a softy. Though ruthless to enemies I want to repay kindness in kind. They were pretty nice to me for Hollow and I don't really want harm to come to the only ones to treat me like that during my entire stay in Hyuko Mundo. They are probably also my only potential allies here aside from possibly Nelial's group except they are completely unreliable. Grimjow's group was slowly nearing the trio and surrounding them with Grimjow in the middle still holding them in place with the pressure of his stare. I guess you barely qualify. He spoke arrogance tripping from every word. I'll give you all a chance. Kneel before this king and serve me then I'll spare your lives, otherwise you can be the next step towards greatness for this king. The trio were looking at each other hesitantly as they were extremely loyal to Haribel, but the odds of them escaping unscathed and possibly even alive wasn't that great. Grimjow bared his fangs at them threateningly due to this delay in response and lack of servility. If they wouldn't kneel to their betters he would simply trample upon them. How about I help you shove that big head of yours up your ass instead? Apache finally couldn't stand it anymore and recklessly insulted him in return. Then I will just take it, he sneers and pounces towards Apache. New mission, protect the Trace Bestias. Reward, new skill, skill infusion. Chapter 51, Bad Knees He didn't even have to consider it at all and was already dashing to intercept Grimjow blocking his paw moments by crossing two of his blades before it could reach Apache his camouflage illusion slowly unraveling as it ended up with the two of them bound in a stalemate trying to force one another back until finally Hisashi swung his extra two blades towards him forcing Grimjow to give up on the competition of strength and back away from them. TCH, Annoying Bug Grimjow spat out aggressively, annoyed that he had suddenly been interrupted by someone else. His eyes screamed murder for his rightful prey being taken away. My apologies I'll also have to avoid kneeling, 
I have bad knees. How about a rain check? Hisashi responded lightly as he kept an eye on all of the ajuchas and his surroundings to position himself better. There was no need to be polite with Grimjow unlike Haribo. The only options he would ever offer them is submit or die. Giving up isn't in his dictionary. W, what are you doing here? He heard Apache yell from behind him with a mix of anger, indignation and embarrassment at being caught off guard and saved. What? Are you not in need of saving Princess? He couldn't stop himself from teasing her while she was embarrassed. Shut up. I can easily stomp this cat to death without you. She continued to yell back to cover for her embarrassment. The other two also seemed to relax a little, although they were still outnumbered they were fairly certain he was stronger than all three of them despite how short he had been in Ajuchas given the desolation they knew he left behind as they tried to keep an eye on him for the past weeks his presence took some of the pressure off. Without warning Hisashi sensed something at the last second and dodged to the side something gouging a deep trench across his carapace covering his chest causing a loud screech to echo. Thankfully since it was a mostly superficial wound his healing was already stitching it back together. It would seem Grimjow hadn't used his fastest speed when attacking Apache before and was now taking a seriously meaning Hisashi couldn't afford any distractions. His speed was still able to keep up with the speed-based Grimjow and his strength far outstripped him, but they were still close enough to where Grimjow had been able to use his momentary lapse and focus to inflict a light wound on him. That was close. He sweated. If I hadn't dodged at the last moment that was aiming directly for my mask which could have been bad for my future if my route to Vasto Lord had been cut short. Answer, system would be able to repair a damaged mask though doing so would cost a significant amount of energy. So much so that all progress made in the last weeks would be for naught. Damn, well that's a relief though I can't afford to lose weeks of progress due to a moment of inattention. He thought. He narrowed his eyes paying close attention for any sudden movements they made, but this wasn't something that was going to last. He guessed they could probably match the enemy's overall power, but that would still mean at least some of them dying or possibly even all of them. The three of you need to retreat. I'll keep them occupied. He told the trio without even looking at them. Oh my, our strong hero. I'll believe in you. Sung Sun said slyly happy to jump at any chance to escape even at his cost. Thanks. Was all Mila Rose said. Who said we even needed your help? Was of course Apache's response. She just might be at Sundara if she keeps up this way. Grimjow growled at them causing his lackeys to start moving in on them to prevent their escape. Hisashi charged a Siro from his mouth which made them swiftly turn taking a defensive position instead while the trio started escaping. Grimjow immediately countered with his own Siro meeting Hisashi's in the middle causing an explosion of energy that forced everyone back. Before he had a chance the Grimjow's team started charging and firing their own Siro's at him trying to box him in. Using his high dexterity and footwork he managed to weave between the repeated beams like a dance though staying safe was taking up most of his concentration. This would be a lot easier to deal with if he could just either run or kill them, but that was exactly what he was trying to avoid. Before he could clearly notice it a white flash passed by home while he continued dodging and weeding separating one of his arms above the elbow. Shit, that's actually going to take some time to regenerate. Hisashi stressed. It was Grimjow who now stood with part of Hisashi's arm in his jaws before crunching down on it causing it to be completely destroyed. The others weren't letting up though as they continued firing off zeros at him to keep him occupied. Although a strategy that couldn't be kept up for long due to the energy expenditure it was very effective at creating openings for Grimjow to exploit. Hisashi used his illusions to hide one of the remaining arms and the stump from sight to make it harder to target and easier to make surprise attacks with it. The bull-looking ajuchas took this opportunity to chase after the three that were escaping. Hisashi pushed his speed to the max by pumping his blood into overdrive on his legs cutting of his pursuit by swiftly chopping off one of his hind legs. Although going over the physical limits with Blur could damage his body as long as he didn't go too hard his high speed regeneration would take care of the micro damage in mere moments. One of the benefits of using the skill as a hollow as opposed to the human Quincy still relying on their weak human physique and regeneration. Although he didn't want to kill Grimjow or his buddy's severe injuries were fine. 
Missing a leg for a while wasn't going to kill him. Chapter 52 Passion With one of their allies incapacitated the others doubled down on their assault giving the trio more of a chance to escape as the full focus was now in Hisashi after he proved to be a very real threat to them. Grimjow managed to add a bunch of additional cuts and scratches to him, but didn't manage to cause another significant injury again as Hisashi was able to pay more attention to Grimjow again now that there was one less ally backing him up. As the fight continued Grimjow was also growing more and more aggravated which made his attacks easier to read too. Not long after the blasts being fired were also slowing down as they had started running out of energy and had to start physically backing up Grimjow instead which they were much more hesitant about seeing how he had easily physically overpowered one of them already. Slowly their injuries were piling up since except for Grimjow none of the others could even defend against the arm he had hidden using his illusions allowing him to quickly pile up a lot of relatively light injuries on them once they came into the melee speeding up the drain on their stamina which was now being used both for fighting him and healing the many non-fatal wounds he was inflicting on them. Only Grimjow was in mostly good shape as he managed to even dodge most attacks from the hidden arm using his high reaction speed and improved senses. Hisashi even made sure to stab the more humanoid members to drain what memories he could to improve his own bipedal combat abilities now that his physique was slowly becoming more human again after passing the Jillian stage. Although he wasn't able to pierce them for extended durations which would allow him to copy most of their skills and techniques, but every little edge he could get he would take. The combat had significantly slowed down and he was hoping the trio had managed to get far enough to where these guys wouldn't be able to catch up with them in their current worn out state. He made sure to focus most of his attacks on their legs when he could as he would rather slow down their chase than reduce their offensive capabilities. By now two more were down for the count leaving it with just him, Grimjow and three of the other Ajuchas in their clash. Although Grimjow was visibly exhausted his eyes hadn't let up. Quite the opposite they contained far more fire than they had at the beginning. Fuck, he isn't going to treat me like he does Ichigo and go around repeatedly harassing me to battle him for the sake of his pride is he? Hisashi worried when he saw the passion in Grimjow's eyes. Mission completed. Active skill, skill infusion gained. Skill infusion. Allows the user to share one of their own abilities with a third party within a short distance of the user themselves. The user infuses an amount of their spirit power into the target and the skill will last until the infused spirit power has been used up by the skill. The consumption speed of spirit power depends on the skill that is being infused. Great, now to lose these guys. Hisashi thought relieved he no longer needed to stick around anymore. It took a while to find an opening, but when he did he gave Grimjow a powerful kick to the sternum sending him flying back. Well it's been a pleasure. But this party has become a bit of a sausage fest so adios, he told them sarcastically emphasizing it with a little mocking bow as his figure disappeared using his illusion skill before he dashed away after the trio. He was fairly sure they should be fine given that the mission was completed and he got his reward, however he had no clue that just escaping Grimjow's band of merry men was enough to complete it even if they ran into other danger while managing to escape. He managed to hear a loud frustrated roar that could only be Grimjow coming from behind, but even if he could somehow track him despite his illusory camouflage he still wouldn't be able to keep up with him let alone in his exhausted state. Hisashi couldn't wait for the upgrade to super speed regeneration in these kind of long drawn out battles it became obvious how useful it was in both healing the minor and major injuries that accumulated and drained stamina on top of it helping speed up his stamina recovery itself as well. He couldn't fathom why the majority of Hollow sacrificed it when becoming Arankar. Though given his regeneration skill had already been upgraded once he wasn't sure just how much better his was compared to the one that the average Hollow had. Although maybe just over half an hour or so had passed while he was holding off Grimjow's posse it didn't take him near as long to catch up to the exhausted trio. Thankfully it seemed his worry was for naught as they seemed no worse off than they were when they left ignoring them possibly being a little more tired from running non-stop since then. He did a quick scan of the area to make sure there were no sources for immediate concern which ended up being quite clear. He cancelled his camouflaging while running beside them causing them to jump and prepare for a fight until they realized it was just him. I'm going to kill you one of these days. Apache yelled in rage though she had no energy to actually even try. Apache, not the time nor place. If it weren't for him who knows what would have happened. 
Sung Sun cut her off before she could continue and Apache for the first time had the decency to look at least somewhat embarrassed regarding her behavior. Sung Sun quickly turned back to face Hisashi and lowered her head. Thanks for saving us, we would have died if you weren't near, she told him. Yes. Quite the coincidence I was nearby. He teased back at her ribbing them for regularly tracking him over the past three months. Well it doesn't hurt to run into someone so strong, she replied shamelessly acting like she didn't have a clue what he was referring to. At least her playful behavior was easier to deal with than Apache's form of hard-headed and brashness. Chapter 53 Quit Playing Games Mila Rose just quietly bowed her head in thanks without feeling the need to add anything unlike the other two. He wasn't sure if it just took longer for her to open up or if she really was just the quiet type unlike the other two. Thankfully she seemed easy going enough at least when compared to Apache. They all still seemed kind of antsy looking at the surroundings worrying that they might still be tracked by Grimjow's group after everything they went though. Hisashi with his enhanced senses though and the knowledge how far they had made it was fairly certain they wouldn't be keep up with them let alone track them down. As long as they could make it back to their lair to join back up with Tyr Haribel they would be safe even without him there to protect them. I'll escort you ladies back to your lair just to be safe. Is that okay with you? he said to reassure them. Oh my, what a gentleman. Sun Sun responded playfully. Whatever HMPF. Apache harumphed. That was probably the best he was going to get from her for now, though improvement was improvement. What's that Apache? Cat got your tongue? He asked her teasingly. That's Emilio for you. She said, stomping her hoofs in irritation. He decided to not push her any more for now no matter how fun it was to push her buttons and tease her. Okay, you two love birds. Let's get going before they do catch our trail. Sun Sun said to get them back on track causing Hisashi to chuckle and Apache just looked away deciding it was best to ignore her friend. It wasn't like she wasn't used to Sun Sun's teasing. Everyone agreed so they started rushing towards their lair at their fastest sustainable pace. It was easy to keep up with them for Hisashi due to his insane deck stat to the point where it was little more than a jog to him. When they finally made it to the lair a couple hours later they found it empty. Haribel must have things of her own to do or she is out looking for these three. Hisashi thought to himself. I'll wait here with you guys until Haribel comes back. Unless you all are in the mood for a group date. He says joking playfully. That's Haribel Sama you, you, bug. Apache says no longer able to contain her frustration once she feels the disrespect isn't for her, but rather their leader now. Hisashi chuckles and looks at himself before teasingly responding, You're right. I am indeed a bug. But this one can crush you until your juicy insides come out. He decided to press on now that they are secure. At least it is something to amuse himself and he is sure Sun Sun appreciates it. Gah! Make him shut up. She yells back knowing she can't attack him simply for being annoying most of all after he saved the three of them. Realizing this wasn't going to ease her frustration though. Sing Sun chuckled mirthfully and decided to egg her on some more by chiming in, you know you two talk the most out of all of us, is this how you flirt? SH shut up Sung Sun. You're supposed to be on my side. She responds getting flustered by being attacked from both sides. Era era? but you're being so cute, Dot. She continued teasing her. At this point Apache just grumbled and sat down T-Zero the side, where Mila Rose had settled down, trying to ignore the two of them. It was times like these he realized how mind-numbingly boring Hueco Mundo was for regular Hollow. Your options literally were fight. Do nothing. There was no entertainment and socialization was far and few between. Eventually he thought of something they could do to pass the time even as a bunch of hollow without opposable thumbs or in some sun, Apache and his cases no fingers at all. He took them outside and taught them how to play tic-tac-toe in the sand. At least it was something to do and unlike having a conversation which both Apache and Mila Rose who were pretty bad conversational partners at least to him they at least seemed to enjoy playing a game as a change of pace. 
he managed to get a little closer to Sung Sun who actually seemed to enjoy talking with him, though he felt like though not much better and despite a few frustrated outbursts when she lost Apache did seem to loosen up some towards him by playing together. If he considered getting yelled at and cussed out marginally less as loosening up. Now that he didn't have the constant hunt to distract him he did end up also ruminating a bit which lead him to realize he was missing his sister and Masaki. Not that the trio was that terrible as far as company went. Even Apache grew on him as he got more used to her abrasiveness plus messing with her was fun. You bastard. Apache huffed and erased their game of tic-tac-toe that she just lost when Haribel came back. Although it was hard to tell the passage of time in Hueco Mundo Hisashi was fairly certain quite a few hours had passed. Hmm, what are you doing? Haribel asked her expression seemed neutral, but she sounded somewhat curious. I want to play with you Haribel same. I hate playing with this guy, Apache said as she jumped up to greet Haribel. Hisashi just shook his head at the disparity between how Apache treated Haribel and literally anyone else, he really wondered what Haribel had done to earn such deep loyalty from the Trace Bestias despite this not being the norm for Hollow. She really was the reliable and respected Nasan to the three. Hey Haribel. Long time no see. Good to see you again though. Hisashi said cheerfully. Long time? Haribel asked with some confusion evident. I guess to most Hollow, most of all high-ranking ones like Sajuchas and above, a few months or even years counts for nothing, he sighed inwardly. Chapter 54, With My Heart Of course. Every moment spent without you lovely ladies feels too long. Hisashi joked dramatically. Not near long enough, Apache responded viciously. He could almost see the smirk despite her dear face. He acted like he was experiencing a sudden heartache, how can you play with my heart? He said dramatically. Sadly Haribel, the only one he could find attractive in their current form, simply ignored his playful banter as usual. Oh, we all missed our little boy Toy too. Sung Sun responded back flirtatiously. Mila Rose followed Haribel's lead though and simply ignored him. Hisashi would have rolled his eyes if he could given how he was 90% sure that the three of them had been following him to keep an eye on him. So, what has my favorite girl been up to? He asked Haribel. I guess since you went out of your way to save the three of them I can share a little more. I was tracking the movements of Lost No Chase, they have been behaving strangely recently. The reason I had the girls track you down originally was because I believed you were related to it, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Haribel answered him still completely ignoring his teasing. Should he act like he has no clue about Lost No Chase he wondered to himself for a moment, but quickly decided that if she was going to be more open he should at least do a little of the same. What is going on with them? Is Berrigan doing something? he asked. He is making unusual movements, she says with a nod. In what way? he asked curiously. He was sure Eisen must be well into preparing his transition from captain to king of Lost No Chase for replacing Berrigan if he hadn't already secretly. He has been having his underlings gather powerful ajuchas to Lost No Chase for unknown reasons. Unfortunately, getting in to find out what for isn't that easy, she answered him truthfully. Haribel looked slightly unsure as she looked between him and her underlings. It seemed she had finally made up her mind about something. Although I don't entirely agree with your method something big is going on and we don't really have anyone else as an option. I would like to propose some kind of alliance to investigate and deal with whatever Berrigan is planning, she finally told him. Well your three girls already love me so much. How could I not partake, he says teasingly. Fuck you. Apache yelled at him indignantly. Gladly, he responded back to her immediately which caused her to go silent looking away in embarrassment. Seeing Apache down for the Count Sung Sun couldn't hold back her laughter. Ahem, let's stay on topic, Haribel said awkwardly. Of course my queen. Hisashi responded while raising one of his blade as if he was saluting. He was enjoying letting off some steam by actually interacting with people in a somewhat normal way. As normal as bantering with three, high-level hollow could be. The conversations he had with them were the only ones keeping him a little sane over months of endlessly killing Hollow. Haribel simply deadpanned in response. 
He felt she needed to learn to loosen up after however many centuries spent in Hueco Mundo. She was probably the most soft-hearted hollow in this entire place, but living among almost only creatures that wanted to kill and consume her for this long had given her a very cold exterior. He would break through it eventually if it were up to him. I believe I'm getting close to breaking through to Vasto Lord, at that point we would have two and Berrigan should be less of a concern, I've been hearing rumors that something big is happening in Los Noches though, he said knowing Berrigan was not truly what they should be concerned about. I've even heard a crazy one saying someone saw a Shinigami. In Hueco Mundo. Do you believe it? He said. He couldn't outright tell them, but he definitely needed to make sure they were on high alert and acting cautious. Hmm, that's unlikely. Maybe they gained another vast O oh Lord, Haribel said. Haribel Sama, we can't be too cautious, Sung Sun added. Hisashi nodded to lend credence to her opinion. Like they can do anything to Haribel Sama, Apache finally chimed in after recovering from her embarrassment. She had full faith in Haribel's capability. Do you want her to get her dum dum? Sung Sun insulted her snarkily. Okay. Calm down, you two. Haribel said sternly. Yes, Haribel Sama, the two responded in unison. He had to chuckle at seeing how well she had trained them. I think it would be good to be very cautious and gather information regarding the changes in Lost No Chase before making any bigger moves. Hisashi said. Haribel nodded slowly. Okay, we can go with that for the moment. What do you two think? She asked Apache and Sung Sun. If you agree Haribel Sama then I guess I do too, Apache said glaring at Hisashi. I think that's smart Haribel Sama, Sung Sun also agreed. Given how many hours it's been since we lost their chase I think you all are safe. Even if they do somehow still catch you Haribel is here now so I'll be heading back out and work hard at achieving Vasto Lord, Hisashi said. I'll miss you ladies, he teased while walking out. Apache snorted not wanting to give him any more ammo than he already had. Oh, I'll look forward to our next time, Sun Sun responded playfully. Be careful. Haribel said. It seemed though slow he was slowly working his way through her armor. Even if she still acted cold at least she was concerned about him now. He left behind their cave and rushed back to his hunting grounds at full speed. He needed to get to Vast o Lord soon. Both for his own goals, but the four hollow girls were growing on him and with him interfering in canon their safety wasn't even guaranteed while meeting the Erencar. He needed to get stronger as soon as possible. Chapter 55, Steak Dinner Meanwhile back on Earth, Reina was out having a meal with Masaki. They hadn't been able to see each other in a while because Masaki was reconnecting with her family. After how much time they had spent together they had become quite close and missed each other. This was the first time she had some time to catch up. They decided to enjoy a nice dinner to celebrate. So how have things been? Reina asked curiously. It was a lot. My husband was being his usual silly self, but I know he is just using that to cover his feelings. As for Yuzu and Karen it took a while, but they are starting to slowly open up more. Karen is the most difficult one, she has been struggling at school. It hurts knowing I wasn't able to be there for them for so long, she said getting caught up in her melancholy. Yeah. I know we tried to prepare, but there's only so much we could do, Reina said nodding in agreement. She was enjoying a nice medium rare A5 wagyu steak that practically melted in her mouth with each bite and a sip of the paired red wine to bring it all together. Masaki sighed. As for Ichigo. I can't believe my husband was looking the other way with everything that happened. I had to make sure to correct his behavior, she said exasperatedly. Reina chuckled. I'm sure you showed him his place, she responded. Oh yes I did, Masaki said with a warm smile before turning serious. I just hope Ichigo is safe, she said. Hisashi made sure he survived the first encounter with Soul Society, but now it's up to him and his friends there, she said before taking a slow sip of her wine. I hope Hisashi is safe too, she said with a sigh. You know just as well as me that he's probably fine. Unlike my son who takes after his father Hisashi is too smart to get caught off guard, 
Masaki said, doing her best to reassure Reina. I know. I know, Reina said with a light smile breaking onto her lips. Enough about me, though. What have you been up to? Masaki asked. Mostly work and training, Reina answered. She had been throwing herself into her company and training to distract from her worries regarding Hisashi. He hadn't told her a lot about Hueco Mundo, but what little he had told her had convinced her it was a very hostile place. You can't just bury yourself in work, Masaki told her, concerned about her well-being. You're right, but I'm here with you now. Right? Reina agreed. I've been a little worried. Lately I've been feeling like I'm being watched. I think the stress might be making me paranoid, she said with a nervous chuckle. Yeah, maybe take some time off work and delegate some of it to your subordinates. You can always come to visit me, Masaki said. You're right. Being honest, I probably barely need to be there. We're so far ahead of the competition and now that the other programmers are up to speed enough on the code to handle at least all the minor updates and bug fixes I really only need to be involved with the larger changes and updates that come once a year. At this point we're practically printing money as the contracts come in, Reina said. Training is progressing slowly as usual, not too much new to share there. It's only been a couple of weeks since our last shared session after all, she continued. You need to get some hobbies, Reina, Masaki said with concern. I have hobbies. Reina retorted. Like? You know I lived with you for years, right? Masaki deadpanned. Reina sighed in defeat. Yes, yes, mom. She said. Hey! I'm only a bit older than you, Masaki responded indignantly nursing her wine. Try a few years, Reina said with a smirk. You bitch. Masaki responded before breaking into laughter. Reina couldn't hold back her own laughter and join her. This place is really good. Masaki said taking another bite of her steak. Yeah, it's been open for over a decade. It's only recently I've been able to afford eating here, Reina said. Now for the juicy stuff. How has it been finally ending your dry spell, she teased. Masaki blushed heavily and started drinking more of her wine to escape the line of questioning. Come on, you can tell me, Reina continued to pester her. Unfortunately she didn't manage to get any juicy details from Masaki. Reina sighed in defeat never mind. How about anything else? What's up in Karakura, she asked. Other than beating off Kasuk? Masaki asked. Reina chuckled. Oh? Maybe there is some interesting gossip after all, she said. Masaki started laughing I almost wish. No, it's always experiment this and experiment that with him. When he encounters something new he just can't help himself. Nothing a good beating can help though, she explained. After their steak dinner they enjoyed some desserts and coffee making the most of the little time both of them had away from their responsibilities. We have to do this again sometime soon, Reina said excitedly feeling more at ease than she had since Hisashi had left. Yeah, I haven't been able to unwind since going back to Karakura, Masaki said, but she was smiling happily. Reina knew how hard it had been for her to stay away from her family for so long. She knew Hisashi had his reasons, but that didn't make it much better. All she could do was trust in him though. He hadn't let her down so far and he knew how much he had struggled to improve things not only for himself, but also those around him. The Kurosakis had their mother back. She herself was now rich and powerful. She wishes he could reveal himself to their parents too, but he had explained enough about the supernatural world for her to understand that was probably not for the best at least until they were powerful enough to protect them. Shortly after they left the restaurant a tall older gentleman with short black hair, a thick mustache that was sitting on the other end of the restaurant got up and followed them out. He was wearing a shirt, waistcoat and dark leather strap over his right eye. Chapter 56 Lording Over Them Back in Hueco Mundo System, how long has it been? he asked. He had finally managed to achieve his goal, but it had taken almost twice as long as he had expected. Turns out mass murdering the very slowly replenishing population of high-level hollow makes them harder to find. Not only that, 
but they started being more cautious making the fewer around even harder to find. Answer, 4 months 22 days 0 hours 32 minutes 41 seconds. Can you give me a summary of my progress during that time? He continued. Plus 5, 207, 280 XP from Hollow. Plus 255, 200 spirit power from Hollow. Plus 25 levels. Plus 25 stat points. Okay. System, show me my status, he requested. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 58. Race, Hollow. Rank, Ajuchas. Level, 187 to 212. XP, 18,249 out of 225,780. Stats. Strength, 130. Dexterity, 228. Constitution, 60. Intelligence, 100. Spirit Power, 792,882 to 1,048,082. Available stat points, 0 to 25. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. Super Speed Regeneration. Acidic Touch. Silencioso. Active Skills. Soul Body Separation. Spirit Power Concealment. Illusory Aura Blood Energy Blade Transcribe Hachijio Sogai Siro Cumin Negation Skill Infusion Please add all my free points to Dexterity, he asked the system. Dexterity, 228 to 253 Available stat points, 25 to 0 He was feeling a familiar sensation again. Like he was a balloon stretched to its bursting point and could blow up any moment if he stopped suppressing it. He needed to evolve again and this time he needed a somewhat secure location, after last time he wouldn't mind a little extra peace of mind. In Hueco Mundo there was only one group of individuals he trusted though. He made his way to their cave base. It seemed he was in luck because all four of them were already there. Hey Haribel, it's been a while. Hisashi said. Harabelle smiled. Yes, it has, she said. So what brings you here, she asks him curiously. I've reached the threshold for Vasto Lord and am currently holding back my transformation, he explained. Harabelle seemed surprised, but didn't ask him for further information. Everyone in Hueco Mundo had their own secrets. What? Apache yelled indignantly when she heard what he said. How are you already transforming? She continued. Calm down, Apache. He'll tell us when he is ready, Haribel said calmly. Congratulations, you aren't going to leave us poor little women behind once you don't need us anymore, right? Sun Sun said teasingly. How could I ever abandon my harem palace, he joked. Apache furiously kicked him with her hind leg, but it wasn't able to do much damage to him. You bastard. Who's your harem? I hope you explode when you try to transform, she yelled before storming off. Sun Sun merely chuckled. Oh. Well then you better take good care of U.S., husband. She said seductively. Even Mila Rose couldn't help smiling at Apache's little tantrum. So why are you here? Haribel asks in curiosity. I was hoping to have you watch over me while I transform. Just to be safe, Hisashi explained. Of course. We'd gladly help. Well, most of us at least, Haribel said. They ended up finding him a secluded place where he set up his barrier in preparation for the burst of energy that would be unleashed during his evolution. The four ladies were watching him attentively. Both because they were concerned for him and also because he was somewhat an oddity among the hollow. Not only that, but other than Haribel the other three had never seen or experienced a hollow becoming a Vasto Lord and a small part of them hoped witnessing it might help them in achieving the same themselves in the future. Do you think he can actually do it? Apache asked with some worry. Oh, you're able to be honest when he can't hear you? Sun Sun asked teasingly. S shut up Sun Sun. Apache yelled in embarrassment. Just let it go, you know how she is, Mila Rose told Sun Sun. 
but it's so much fun, Sun Sun said happily. Something is happening, Harabelle warned and shielded the others behind her just to be safe. Large amounts of ambient spirit energy started swirling around Hisashi entering his body like he was some kind of black hole. His body started lighting up from the sheer amount of energy being crammed in until he was shining bright white. His form started shrinking until he was only 6 foot 4, 193 centimeters. All of his muscles compacted until his silhouette looked mostly human aside from still having two pairs of arms and a set of wings on his back. As his transformation progressed the spirit pressure was growing so powerful it was distorting the very air around him. The trace bestias gasped at the changes, but Haribel was unsurprised having gone through the same herself. Eventually the pressure was suppressed and the light died down revealing his new look. He had four arms ending in blades that like his mask had a bone-like texture to them. His mask had receded to his above his mouth and stopped covering his eyes revealing parts of his human-like face and a full head of hair was growing from below his mask revealing a black mane. His mask had grown to cover most of his body forming a kind of insectoid armor leaving only the lower half of his face, neck and pale chiseled torso uncovered from the bone-like material. It looks like he's done, Haribel said happily. W.O. Apache stammered. Mila Rose nodded in approval while Sun Sun just licked her lips. Evolution completed. Rank, Ajuchas Dash Vasto Lord. Strength, 130 to 325. Dexterity, 253 to 633. Constitution, 60 to 150. Intelligence, 100 to 250. Spirit Power, 1,048,082 to 2,620,205. Active Skill, Sonido Gained. Sonido. A high-speed movement technique utilized by Hollow and Arankar allowing them to move faster than the speed of sound. The speed achieved is dependent on the user's skill in using the technique and their base physical capability. Mission Completed. Super Speed Regeneration to Ultra Speed Regeneration. Ultra Speed Regeneration Improved version of Super Speed Regeneration that increased the recovery speed. The user can regenerate everything, but their mask near instantly as long as their body has enough spirit power to sustain the recovery. Damage to the user's mask can still be recovered, but will take longer depending on the extent of the damage. Chapter 57 Stretching Hisashi opened his eyes standing in the middle of a large crater left by the explosion of energy his transformation had caused. It was a rather strange sensation being back in a somewhat human form. He felt so small, but also nimble. Like he had gained a great improvement to the control of his body. The only area not completely destroyed was where Haribel had guarded the others. Though hard to tell with her mask covering her mouth he was fairly certain she was smiling at him. He could feel energy filling every part of his body. Despite shrinking to around a third of the size he was before his energy had actually grown many-fold. He could easily crush a couple of his former self. He wasn't sure if Haribel had been this much stronger than him before or if it was just him being an outlier unless something had changed from his previous evolutions he was likely already the most powerful Vasto Lord the moment he evolved. That didn't mean he necessarily had the strength to handle all Arankar though. He suspected an Arankar transformed from an Ajuchas was likely at the same level as a Vasto Lord, let alone what power a Vasto Lord would be after transforming into an Arankar. Alquiora one of the few examples of such was ridiculously powerful and he had no clue how he would stack up to someone like that, not to mention someone like Aizen that managed to control a group of such beings. He looked at the blades his arms ended up in that looked sleeker, but more deadly than ever before. A quick swipe of his arm caused a blade of wind pressure to create in the sand beside him sending a cloud of sand out. His little audience couldn't help, but cough from the sand he kicked up. Hey! Watch what you're doing! Apache yelled angrily. Even if he had become scary strong to her she wasn't going to let that control how she treated him. Still testing his new powers he spread two wings and before they noticed his was behind Apache slapping her ass with the side of his blade which caused her to jump out of shock. The only one that even managed to keep up with his speed was Haribel. For the rest he just disappeared and reappeared behind Apache as if he teleported. 
with my wings, sonido, and raised dexterity I'm not even sure how fast I am anymore, he muttered inwardly marveling at his new capabilities. What do you think you're doing? Apache screeched indignantly once she realized what had happened, turning around as fast as she could to prevent any further spanks. Sung Sun seeing another opportunity for some fun with Apache's back now turned to her also spanked her with the tip of her tail. Why are you all bullying me? Apache cried out. It's fun. Hisashi and Sung Sun ended up saying at the same time causing him to smile at his partner in crime. Haribel couldn't help, but sigh. However, she seemed a bit happy and a little relieved for some reason. Hisashi wasn't sure if it was because she was worried about him failing or encountering problems during his transformation or was instead worried about how he would behave afterwards. Whatever it was, at least it wasn't a bad thing. Mila Rose looked like she was hesitating to say something, eventually she seemed to give up and left it as is though. Mind helping me get used to this new form? Hisashi asked Haribel. At this point she was the only one of them that could still push him and force him to adjust to his new abilities. All right, she responded while nodding. She ended up facing him in the crater he left behind with his transformation her vibrant emerald eyes trained on him for any movement. Although she had been able to keep track of him when he spanked Apache, keeping up with him would actually be quite hard. His speed was abnormal even for a vast o lord. Just one of the many mysteries surrounding Hisashi that she would love to uncover. He was a total unknown Jillian not even a year ago and still a relatively unknown to anyone but them. Yet here he was standing across from her a vast o lord just like herself. It had taken her centuries to become a vast o lord just from the Ajucha stage, let alone how much time she had spent all the way from Jillian. A slash in, in Hueco Mundo time, less time has passed on earth and soul society. Not only that, but even for them who were relatively docile hollow he was a strange one. His behavior much more human, something she had never encountered with an Ajuchas. Even more so than any vast o-lord she had met including herself. He suddenly burst towards her swiping at her like a pincer with blades coming from both direction. She managed to deflect one blade giving her an opening she could use to just barely dodge. His growth had been insane, she wasn't even sure she would be able to handle him if this first clash was an indication. She even noticed his sprit pressure was heavier than any she had experienced, even Berrigan. It was like she was restrained simply by its presence. Like moving through molasses. Before she could even adjust from the first clash he appeared from her right swinging. It was too late to dodge, forcing her to block. Unfortunately, he had four arms, even though she managed to engage two of them in the bind two more came swinging at her. As a last resort she burst forth with her entire strength barely pushing him back, but just enough for the two blades to miss her by a hair's breadth. It had only been the second clash and she already felt like she was running out of breath between the rapid ceaseless attacks and the abnormal spirit pressure both causing her to expend more stamina than she otherwise would have. Chapter 58 Considerations Hisashi was extremely excited. Now that he was sparring with Haribel and actual Vasto Lord, he was getting an idea of his newfound strength. He was completely outclassing her in his speed while still at least matching her in strength. Though he was still adjusting to his sudden raise in power he could already tell when he did master it he would be able to deal with Haribel pretty easily which was good since he knew she was already the second most powerful hollow if you don't consider Arankar. Knowing this he finally felt a little relief, he might not have the power to dominate in Hueco Mundo just yet, but he definitely had enough power to move around without needing to worry he might get destroyed the moment he runs into the wrong person. He had been rushing through things trying to evolve as quickly as possible. The only interaction he even had with others for the past months beyond fighting and killing had been with Haribel's crew. Haribel, not one to take a beating when on the offensive hoping to perform better when not on the back foot by relying on her experience rather than her physical abilities. She clashed with him and at first she regained an upper hand with his having to use all four of his arms to block her slashes. As the battle progressed Hisashi was learning and adjusting though. At first he got to the point where he was able to block her with only three of his arms eventually even getting it down to only needing two by improving his stance and adjusting where and how he received her blows. 
he could have easily used his illusions and trickery to beat her much faster or spamming energy-based attacks with his ridiculous levels of spirit power. However, this spar wasn't about defeating her easily or at all. It was about improving his skills. He couldn't be sure there would never be an enemy that could see through his illusions. If there ever was then he would have to rely purely on his physique and swordsmanship to beat them. Given how most of his battles had been up until now he had mostly relied on his physique and illusion skills to steamroll the enemies he could and avoid those he couldn't. Until now though he hadn't had any enemies that used swords and that would likely change soon enough. Both Arankar and Shinigami primarily used swords after all. Haribel was the perfect person to help him shore up this weakness of his. She might not be an Arankar yet, but with her right arm ending in what was pretty much already a broadsword she definitely was a swordsman with centuries of experience in combat. Who better to spar and learn from? There might be better swordsmen among the Shinigami and Siriidei that could teach him. However all of Soul Society was under the watch of Wandenrake, Yawacha's empire hidden in the shadow of Siriidei. If he didn't discover him then Aizen likely would have. Both of them were individuals he would rather not be on the radar for. That was even ignoring the 99% chance of any Shinigami killing him the moment he showed up. Halo didn't have the best reputation among any of the other factions, and for good reason. Although with every evolution a Halo became more rational most of them are more like a talking beast than sentient being until they become Arankar. Haribel's group is a major outlier. The only other Hollow he can remember being of a similar disposition based on the show before becoming an Arankar was Neliel. Most Hollow were still pretty awful individuals after becoming Arankar. Since both of them had near limitless stamina they actually sparred for well over an hour before they called it a day without even breaking a sweat. Although part of him hated becoming a Hollow, he had to be thankful for some aspects of it. It would have been much worse if he hadn't gotten a system that allowed him to keep his sanity. If not for that he would have probably been either eliminated by the Shinigami or consumed by another hollow before even managing to become an Ajuchas. Now however he was extremely powerful and near immortal so despite the many struggles he had to go through to get here he could have done much worse in his second life. The Trace Bestias were practically stunned to silence during and for a while after their spar. They had never witnessed a battle between two vast Olord after all. The only two they were aware of were Haribel and Berrigan, the latter of which they avoided to the best of their ability. While Hisashi was left wondering what his next steps should be now that he became a Vasto Lord. Of course he wanted to become an Arankar, but he was still worried. Unlike the regular evolutions of a hollow becoming an Arankar would require tearing off his hollow mask, something which the vast majority of hollow didn't survive without the assistance of the Hogyoku created by Urahara Kasuk. It was probably now already in the possession of Aizen at this point. His options would be to either risk it and tear of his mask hoping his will was powerful enough to keep his soul together to complete the transformation or hope the system would act and help him through it neither of which were a guarantee. Or he would somehow need to get transformed with the Ogyoku. New mission, allow the system to absorb the Ogyoku. Reward, evolution into a perfect Arankar giving the host the best offered by being hollow and Shinigami. Oh shit! Hisashi thought seeing the new mission. It was both a bit terrifying and tempting. He would gain immense power, but at the same time he wasn't exactly thrilled at the idea of stealing the Hogyoku. At this point it was either in the highest security prison in Soul Society with Rukia or already in the hands of Aizen. The different flow of time between Earth, Hueco Mundo, and Soul Society making it hard to keep track between them all. Chapter 59, No Longer Alone Having finished the spar they all returned to the girls' cave hideout together. It looks like our husband will be more than able to protect us poor little women, Sung Sun teased. Of course. You can rely on me. Hisashi joked in return. Even though they probably didn't need much protection most of all when Haribel was around he would still do his best if it came to it. Currently he was the strongest hollow out of all the ones he had met but it was yet to be determined how he would stack up against the Arankar faction he already knew was forming in secret. He wasn't sure exactly where and when in the timeline Aizen had taken over rule of Lost No Chase and started building the strength of his faction there, but it should have been going on for quite a while already before his break with Soul Society. 
He had just been hiding behind Berrigan until he didn't need to wear his mask for Soul Society anymore. Protect who? I don't need this bastard's protection. Apache yelled in a fluster, finally breaking out of the stupor witnessing the spar had left her in. She was growing on him. She acted like she hated him, but along with Sung Sun out of all four of them those two interacted with him the most by far. She just wasn't very honest about her feelings and was easy to set off. Harabel nods thoughtfully though seeming to take his words seriously despite the joking tone. It seemed she was quite observant regarding his intentions despite being quite cold on the surface. She was probably the hardest to read, but from the show he knew deep down she cared. Mila Rose simply snorts. She was more than enough to take care of herself, but she couldn't help feeling a little warm inside. Hueco Mundo was a cold and unforgiving place and in her long life there she had only managed to find a few others she could call friends and they finally found another after so long. Now that we have you here we might as well discuss what we have been able to find out, Harabelle said to get things back on track. I've been watching Las Noches from a distance. Berrigan seems to be more active than I've ever seen him, sending out groups of his hollow all over Hueco Mundo lately. I just haven't been able to determine the reason yet, she said with a pondering expression. Looking back up at them after breaking from her thoughts she looked at her subordinates to ask what about your investigation? The girls explained how they had been going around Hueco Mundo investigating and talking with the few hollow sentient and calm enough to not attack them right away. It seemed hollow were going missing all over the place, but no one was quite sure what was happening to them. Most just assumed they had been consumed which wasn't that far-fetched. Even less so with how many hollow Hisashi had been consuming for the past month since he got there. Another thing they heard about were some rumors going around about a human girl in Hueco Mundo hanging out with a group of hollow on the surface. With the investigations of Berrigan and the disappearances ongoing they hadn't had a chance to check it out any further yet. I'll investigate it, Hisashi offered happily. With the new mission he received he wasn't sure what to do about Aizen and the Arankar. Should he join them? Should he sneak in using his illusions to try stealing the Hogyoku? Should he fight them along with Ichigo's crew when he attacks Lost No Chase? For now he would rather avoid it until he has had more of a chance to think about it and this would be a good excuse as any. He also already had some suspicions as to what the rumors might be about and was quite curious about what he might find while investigating. If anything it would be something different from the endless killing for a bit. Not that he would stop killing any aggressive hollow he did come across, who would turn down free food after all. They hashed out their plans with further discussion. Harabel and the Trace Bestias were going to track the groups being sent out of Los No Chase to see what they were doing rather than watching Los No Chase itself for the moment while he would search the surface to find out what the rumors were about. He might have his suspicions, but for them who didn't know about Arankar something looking like a human in Hueco Mundo was out of the ordinary. Well as always I'll miss you beautiful ladies, but don't miss me too much, he said with a playful wink. He had missed being able to wink. One of the many things he was once again able to do after decades of being stuck with his hollow mask being his entire face. Finally it became more true to its name again and was more of a mask or helmet than covering absolutely every inch of his face. It definitely opened him back up to a whole world of expressions once again. Before he left he made sure to temporarily impart his ultra-speed regeneration on all four of them. He was concerned they would soon be running into the hammerhead shark Arankar that belonged to Berrigan's faction who came looking for revenge after Aizen turned him into an Arankar. They were quite surprised when he imparted the skill, but it wasn't too crazy. There was a large variety of hollow with their own unique abilities after all. Compared to some of the other things they had seen him do, this was rather mundane by comparison. He could have imparted some of his more esoteric skills, but he was worried that might gain the wrong kind of attention from Aizen if he noticed. If he imparted them a skill belonging to the Shinigami or Quincy or even worse his passive spiritual energy absorption skill it would likely be recognized by Aizen, quickly turning them into his little guinea pigs. He wanted to help them, not harm them. With his large pool of spirit power he was able to impart enough of it to grant them the skill for at least a couple of weeks unless they ended up using it heavily. If they got into the fight while he was gone they would at least have a good edge. 
He couldn't rely on things just magically going the way they went in canon after all and he didn't want to lose the only friends he had in Hueco Mundo. It wouldn't give them the ability to do whatever they wanted, but the massive boost to their regeneration should give them a second life and if the Trace Bestias got attacked it would give Harabelle more time to come to their rescue. He wasn't sure exactly how strong Ultra Speed Regeneration was just yet without more thorough testing, but from what little he did notice during his spar with Harabelle his already impressive regeneration had seen an impressive bump. Chapter 60 The Chase it had been a couple of weeks scouring the sandy dunes that covered Hueco Mundo's surface under the cold moonlight for Hisashi. Although the forest of Minos might be dangerous, the mind-numbingly monotonous surface was by far the worst experience to him. At least with the life and death fight something was happening. He had come across some hollow though very few, most of which he consumed, but his targets had eluded him. It was only now that Hisashi caught onto some promising tracks. He found a large gully-shaped track along with a bunch of footprints all going in the same direction. After a day of tracing the tracks, he finally found the source. Three hollows seemed to be chasing a little green-haired girl. A huge snake like hollow, a large humanoid hollow with what looked like a huge Maori-like mask and a human-sized and shaped hollow with an insect-like mask. If you look closer though the girl had a cracked skull like hollow mask covering the very top of her head indicating she was an Arankar rather than a human. For a hollow unaware of what Arankar were it would make sense they believed she was human when seeing them from a distance. Though it looked like the other three hollow were hunting the little girl it wasn't hard to tell they weren't serious given the lack of killing intent coming from them and the tracks had been going on for far too long if this were truly some kind of hunt. It was just Nelial and her fraction though in her current childlike form S.H. went by Nell Tuesday. Given the description of the suspicious activity this was pretty much what he had expected. The only humans in Hueco Mundo were more likely than not to be Arankar and there was only one little girl Arankar that he was aware of in Hueco Mundo around this time. Neliel was one of the highest ranking Arankar and lost no chase until she was ambushed by Noitra who was jealous of her but couldn't defeat her in a direct clash. During the ambush her mask was damaged turning her from her powerful adult form into a weak little child with amnesia. Rather than finish her off Noitra preferred she suffer and kicked her out of Lost No Chase instead. The three hollow chasing her were simply her fraction that followed her in exile despite her losing her memories. Hisashi considered simply leaving and reporting his findings to Haribel, but it was also a good opportunity to introduce himself to what was pretty much the only other group of peaceful hollow besides Haribel's group. Since there were so few of them introducing himself and making a good impression might actually be very worthwhile. He was rather lacking in allies after all. On earth he had his sister and Masaki. Maybe Ishin and Kasuk, but he didn't fully trust them yet since he hadn't actually gotten to know them yet. Sure they were good guys in the show, but that was from the perspective as Ichigo as the protagonist. There was no telling how they would treat him a hollow. He hoped better now that Masaki should have returned and explained more about him, but you could never be too careful so that made all of two guaranteed allies on earth. In Soul Society he would trust no one currently and couldn't foresee that changing any time soon. The Shinigamis, admittedly warranted, Prejudice against Hollow was only beaten by the Quincy. He wouldn't dare risk going out of his way to try befriending any Shinigami until he had the power to resist at least all the captains besides maybe Yamamoto and even then he would prefer not to venture into Soul Society itself. Maybe Ichigo and Rukia would be in and after she was rescued and Ichigo rehabilitated his relationship with Siriidei. He would hopefully at least have positive feelings once he found out Hisashi had actually twice saved and protected his mother which left Hueco Mundo where he only had Haribels, making four allies there. Adding them all up he had a whopping six allies gained over the decades since his reincarnation. Adding four more would be nearly doubling them in one fell swoop. Not only that, but if Neliel regained her adult form she was would also immediately become the most powerful ally Haribel would only be able to match her after becoming an Arankar and even then it was questionable if she could beat Neliel in her prime. Unlike Ichigo he knew all four of them were friends and merely playing something akin to tag. Since Nelly was currently in her childish Nell 2 form, the best thing he could do was play along. He sped past the three chasing Nell 2 sweeping her up in his arms. And you're caught, he said with a chuckle. Ah, uh, 
she yelled when she was suddenly moving faster. The other three continued chasing after the two of them. Oh no! We have to save her, the big chunky hollow yelled. It's up to us, the skinny one chimed in. They were rather slow compared to Hisashi though who wasn't even using his sonido nor the limits of his dexterity. Nell too was alternating between screaming, giggling and kicking her legs excitedly. After running far enough ahead for the three chasing them to be mere silhouettes in the distance Hisashi stopped, waiting for the three chasing to catch up. No, no, faster, faster. Don't stop. We're playing endless chase. Nell too yelled. If we don't give them the chance to catch up it won't be fun for them will it? He asked her. Though mostly because he was fairly certain unlike Nell too they didn't think he was playing along and instead were worried he was kidnapping Nell too. She nodded seriously. Unlike her serious demeanor would indicate though she started climbing up his arm and shoulder until she managed to sit on his shoulder. So, what's your name little one? He asked turning his head to face her on his shoulder. I am Nell too the errand car, she said proudly crossing her arms over her chest. What about you? She asked out of curiosity. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part four.